welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Ner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's sixth highest ranking wine program. We're moving up the charts, Mont, and today we're going supermarket Chardonnay. We want to focus on tasting wines that are widely available, more available, and that's what we're doing here today. We've got three Chardonnays that are supermarket brands, wines that I think a lot of you can locate, and we're doing Chardonnay because it is really one of America's favorite wines, and we haven't done value Chardonnay with the recession or whatever else is going on, a little economic squeeze. Uh, I wanted to focus on wines, fuck off, I want to focus. I want to focus on wines that are under 12 bucks, eight, 8.30 and $11. And uh, without further ado, Mont, let's just get right into it. Um, first, it's a Stonehenge 2005 Chardonnay from California, eight US dollars. Um, Stonehenge is a producer I've been pretty fond of since I bought a bunch of the 92 vintage Cabernet that got 90 points wine spectator. Bobby, you remember that? The Stonehenge Cabernet that we bought the bejesus cases of? Okay, Bobby hates it. Anyway, 90 point spectator it was like a $10 cab. It was like the first big wine that I bought like for the store in a big way and did really, really well. So I always have a little bit of a soft spot for Stonehenge. So when I score this wine, remember, subtract one or two points. Anyway, let's give this wine a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Now it has a little bit of a tss, aerosol kind of thing going on on the nose, a little cleansing. It, it smells like what you would clean the bathroom with, believe it or not. So very awkward little nose. Very chemically driven, the nose. So it's kind of wild. They do get a little pear, but a very awkward, shh, very awkward um, nose. I get a little bit of alcohol coming through. I do get a little hint of butter, a little honeycomb, but definitely clearly on the chemical kind of medicine-y, you know, under the sink kind of stuff. My, you know what I'm talking about? Very weird. Let's give it a whirl. Did you just see what happened? Piper reversed it and pinned Nikolai Volkov. Now, <laughs> there's a trade. Are you serious? I swear to God. It's, it's a bad trade. I know, no, Bobby. It's, it's, it's Manny for Dice K, straight up. Huge trade in our fantasy league. Bobby just traded Dice K for Manny. Terrible. Anyway, high acidity, great grip. Brandon's gonna be devastated. Um, good complexity, nice richness on this wine. Um, a little dull on the mid palate and falls short on the finish. Um, give it one more whirl. That was one of the most amazing moments of Wine Library TV history. Nikolai got reversed into a small package and Piper pinned him. And AJ and Bobby made a huge trade in our fantasy league. Um, all in all, a nice textbook Chardonnay, not creamy, not over-oaked, which I appreciate. It's a little bit more balanced than a lot of the overdone, you know, the thing that everybody's jumped off the Chardonnay bandwagon, a lot of you who are watching, I know, are no longer um, drinking Chardonnay because you always say, oh, they're too oaky, they're too over the top, they're too oaky and buttery. This isn't. Clean, crisp, I mean, it's nothing special. It's an 82-point wine, but definitely if you're looking for an alternative or if it's on a TGIF Friday's list and you don't know what else to order, it's not going to scare you or kill you. Maybe just frighten you. Let's move on. Estancia, 2006 Chardonnay. This wine rolls in at $8.30. Let's see what's going on here. Ritz. Again, you know, I really am enjoying for people to expand their palate, and that kind of means maybe going back for me into Chardonnay. I haven't tasted a lot of under $10 Chardonnays, so for me this is expanding my palate. I haven't got a sense or a pulse of the under $10 Chardonnay California market, so this is a lot of fun for me. 06 Estancia Chard. Again, kind of light, not too dark either. Wow, that's a blockbuster, huh? Nice nose. This has a little bit more of like a white flower thing going on, almost like a white pepper kind of component, which I kind of like. I get a little lemon peel. This has a little bit more body than the last wine. It has a little bit more of like a like a Boston cream donut, right? Like the, the cream inside. I like the richness. I like the little subtleties of lemon lime, which are fine. Not bad. You know, a little too acidic, a little off balance. But a little bit like of a pineapple, kind of coconut 
little tropical aspect going on. Good acidity again, not over oaked. Going in, I thought that could be a real problem on this show. So far, no, ha, <sighs> oak monster. And I appreciate that. Um, it's okay. I mean, it's not you know changing my life, but it's not the worst thing I've ever had in my life. I would go 83 points. No, I would go 84 points. I would go 84 points on this. Not bad. It's got a little heat on the end. Not awful for eight dollars and thirty cents. Not bad, ma. You know, Acacia, which is a great producer. This is their A series, so it's A by Acacia. Uh, Eleven U.S. dollars, um, and this wine is from the two thousand and six vintage. Let's see what's going on here. A little rinse first. That was an amazing job by Piper. Stun Nikolai. Let's get this wine a sniffy sniff. Now this has the best nose of the bunch, right off the bat. This also has like a papaya guava kind of, guava actually. Heavy on the guava, coming through very clean, very delicious. Yeah, really gorgeous guava flavors um, coming through, really quite beautiful. I also get a really like kind of cloudy kind of, you know like, like bright sunshiny day kind of thing going on in here. It's vibrant fruit, you know, it's like really like almost like Fig Newton, kind of little like a, like a, like a lemon Fig Newton coming through. Kind of neat, let's give it a whirl. Reminds me of a smoother version of the Estancia. Has a little bit more length, uh, has a little bit of graininess, which I like. Nice acidity to flavor profile. Balance, meaning the acid and the fruit kind of collide and make a nice silkiness form. Nice long finish, rich, medium bodied. All of these, none of them were over the top oaked, which is something that I think a lot of people, including myself, preconceive and go into thinking is going on with under $10 California Chardonnay. I think there's a big movement away from the oak. I think people are coming back to balance. I think these wines are much more food friendly than the three or four vintages ago versions of these exact wines. I think California is making a shift away from the oak a little bit. And for my palate, that's appreciated. And I'm sure as long as we have this, eventually I'm gonna want the oak. It's, you know, it's a pendulum game in the wine world. I do get the fresh apple pie kind of thing going on in this wine, and I like it. I'm gonna go 86 six plus points on this. I think it's very serviceable. $11 Chardonnay and very much would recommend people going out if you want to have Chardonnay to try this wine. Not bad. Question of the day. What is the last bottle of Chardonnay that you consumed? Because you, talking to you, Ma, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.